the arms on the photograph. Oh, they look skinny. I thought they were just chains with slip stitches, but they're not. So the photograph isn't as I expected it to look. We've got this magic circle with double crochet in them. And then you've got this half treble crochet. Hmm. And I've done it to the pattern. That is the right amount of stitches. So his arms are a bit longer. But I just thought it would just give him a bit more character. You know, if you, you can bend his arms like that. I might keep the legs straight. Anyway, I might not. And I'll show you how to do the magic circle again. Tail over your hand, catch your thumb, round, turn your hand over, take your hook, go under the first strand, grab the second, pull it through. You kind of do a twist motion. And then the second yarn goes through the loop. And there you go, there's your magic circle. Now, when a pattern says SS, there is abbreviation on this. I can show you that, hold on. All right, the abbreviation is on the back. That's why I say this pattern's really good. Can you see down here? Oh, it's different on here. I see a lot of patterns with just SS, so slip stitch, but this one's put extra letters on. So to slip stitch, like I said before, if you were going to join in the round, more fingers and thumbs, First stitch, put your hook through, grab your yarn, pull through that stitch and then pull through the loop on your hook and that's joined together. So do that again. To slip stitch, hook through your top of your stitch, grab your yarn, pull it through the top of the stitch and through that loop, your new loop. Now to chain, yarn over your hook, pull through, yarn over your hook, pull through. You see the way I'm holding my hook too, whether you're left or right, I presume this works. I'm right-handed. Now I hold my hook majority of the time like a pencil. A lot of my crochet friends use it as a, like a knife. Either way is fine. You, if you're new to crochet, you work out which way is more comfortable for you. I find the pencil way. So yarn over your hook, pull through. There's your chain. Yarn over your hook, pull through the loop. And you keep doing that until you've got the desired length or whatever the pattern says. Now, to do a half treble, I'll just do one to start. Think of yep the this yarn. I've done a few off camera. I kept splitting the yarn. You know the hook goes through the yarn, and splits it. There's your chain, and you want to go into there. 
Now, if you're going to the top of your stitch, it's like when you're doing your double crochet, you're going to the top of there. But this is chains. You do yarn over your hook. You put your hook into one of those chains. Yarn over your hook again, pull through the chain. So you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all the three. Now I'm going to show you what a treble looks like and then you're going to know why I'm saying half. Yarn over, hook into your chain, pull through, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of those loops, stop. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's a taller stitch than the half treble crochet. So you've got the double crochet, half double crochet, treble crochet, and so on. They do get taller. I'll take that one out. So you see why it's half treble crochet, because it's half of the movement. Yarn over, hook into your chain, yarn over, pull through the chain, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. If you're new to crochet, this keeps splitting, don't give up, keep going. Your hands will hurt at first. Put it down, go away, do something, come back. You can do a few hand exercises too. It does hurt at the beginning, did me. And I don't think I'm unique because you're doing something that you haven't, you've never done before. Now I personally could do these arms totally different. Similar principle. But if you wanted them skinnier, take those out. Let's do a double crochet. You could do a double crochet all the way along. Or you could slip stitch. And then you'll have, as the photograph looks, skinny arms. It's up to you how you do it. But that's how you do a half double crochet. If you're unsure, stop, go back a little ways and watch again. How I enveloped the pipe cleaner into the arm, these are about five and a half inches. You want to hold the arm that I made like the pattern says and the pipe cleaner in one hand. Go to make a half treble crochet. Miss one or two chains. I'll miss uh, two. Put your hook into your stitch. Or chain, sorry. Go underneath your pipe cleaner. Grab your yarn. Pull it through the chain. Now you've caught the pipe cleaner and you can finish off your stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Oh, I knew that would happen. It's not going to work, is it, on camera? Guaranteed. And do that all the way along. First one is, it is it is awkward and this yarn does not help. Yarn over, go into your chain, under your pipe cleaner, grab the yarn, pull it through, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through. You can straighten them out when you've finished, so don't worry about them all being skew if. And you can make his arms as short as long as you like. 
you just add more chains do at least 18 to 24 chains and uh, just keep going keep doing this now when you've finished Obviously the hand is at the bottom, like here. Now the stitches are bunched up because I didn't want too long at arm. And I have inside the pipe clean, I haven't cut any off. I've tidied it on the hand and then I've tied them, twisted the pipe cleaners together inside here. This is just an, an optional extra if you wanted to have bendy arms. You don't have to do this. I just thought I'd show you how I found out how to do it. You could do a different stitch as well. You don't have to do treble, half treble. You could do a double crochet. So you just go straight into your chain, under your pipe cleaner, bring your yarn through. There are your two loops. And pull through. Hook into your chain, under your pipe cleaner, and pull through. You could do that. You don't have to have the long one. It's kind of similar, but it's just elongated. It's not as stubby as it should be on the pattern. And then I go to the bottom, to the hand. Just push it down, show you. Oops. <gasps> Goodness, nearly pulled it off. So when you're back to the hand, you want it something a bit like that. And what I did was thread the tail from the magic circle, wrap it over the pipe cleaner, bend it over so it traps it, and then thread through your stitches one way and then you can go the other way and it won't come out. Pull it tight first so you've got no hole or a little hole and then it's an optional extra it's behind me fabric glue now in the uk we have a shop called boys or boyes however you say it b-o-y-e-s they sell fabric glue hobbycraft sell it as well you can get it online obviously and i put a blob on the back of his hands and it'll just hold the pipe cleaner in place but if you do that first as well, bend it over, do your thread, your yarn, and then when you've got the other tail as well here, you can weave that in as well and trap it down. But I just put some glue on, just for a bit of security. And the other end is obviously going to go through the body like that. I, I might do it with this carrot when I've done it from the uh, kit. And then... I will show you now how to do the carrot tops. I'll show you another tip. You know the hands, so this is the magic circle with the double crochets in it. I threaded my needle in the direction of how you close the circle. Go under a few stitches, pull the hole tight under a few more and I learnt this quite quickly when I learnt to crochet now go the other way you finished in that gap there go to the next gap so you're not pulling out your, what you've just done and just go back the other way it just leaves it a little bit more secure And also, if you wanted, if you got the if you get the fabric glue, put a bit a dab of that on. Now we've got this end. This is the legs. This is what they've said to do in the pattern. I personally think they're pretty ugly, and I would change them. But for now, I'm going to just use what I've been given. And do the same thing. Put your thread through. So instead of going on your circle. Go back up where you've made the half treble stitches and just thread through. Make sure you don't come through to the front. 
because you will alter the look if you do. And then again, go past the stitch. Because if you don't, sorry, if you go when, wherever you've stopped, jump back over and put the needle through and it will catch. And then I always run it a third time through. And that's just um, so I know it won't come out. I always go three times if I can. And then snip off the end. I mean, this is generally not going to go through the wash, is it? Now, I've nearly finished, Kevin, with my yarn. And what I would do is, because the photograph's not showing me exactly, put a leg either side. Now, you finished your yarn at the feet, foot. Same with the hand. So you've no tail here, if you like, to sew in. So you're going to have to cut one. I'll prepare the other leg and I'll show you how I'm going to put it on. It's actually quite long, isn't it? It looks funny on the photograph, but now I've done that. Anyway, I'll do the, um, I'll prepare the other leg and I'll come back. Like I said, I've nearly finished Kevin with my yarn. I've cut a good length off the same colour as his legs, threaded the needle. At the back of one leg, I've gone up and down. I'm not just going to sew at the tip here onto the body. I want to sew a little ways down, probably about an inch, so I know it's not going to be pulled off. And then whereabouts that is, I'll just go up a little bit because I don't want to get, I haven't finished, I've got a couple of rows left, round, sorry. I don't want to catch on the stitches I'm going to go into. So I'm going to go up a little ways, say two rounds, pop the needle in, pop the needle through, and approximately, if I just pop that through, let's have a look. You don't have to do it this way. You can just do it surface stitching, you know, on one side, cut off, and then do the other side. But I'm going to do it this way. So I just thought I'd show you while I'm doing it. And then get the other leg. Approximately same height on the other side. And pop the needle through. I'll go there that's lower. That's it. There are YouTube channels that actually do this. Um, you know, their patterns or they like to do this kind of crochet. I personally do not enjoy making teddies as much as I can do it and I'll follow any pattern out there and it won't look bad. Now you don't want to do this too tight but you don't want to do it too loose neither. And then what you need to do is just go back and forth because I've stuffed there and I just need to stuff the very tip and that's where you're if you've got one of these hooks or a pencil something with a rounded end you can just slowly put the stuffing in but I've stuffed almost down to the bottom and then I'll just go backwards and forwards through both legs don't do it too tight do one at a time and just make it look pretty on the sides as well you know through here if you can go where the, st the length of the stitches go do that like I go across here go around go down and the same on the other side I'll do that off camera I finished the orange bit I've still got it attached and this is what I'm doing with the legs just put them either side And just because I've stuffed it as well go down here go through the body and then when I go to the other side make sure you catch the leg on the other side there you go I'm not going to go right to the bottom 
because I have to finish off. So go through, but you want to go on the edge ish because you don't want to alter the nice pattern you've done, the, you know, the crochet stitches. There you go. Just go back through that one bit there. Go through here. And you can go up and down. Or what I'm going to do, go into one of the legs, go through the back. See that stitch in there? Oh, that's really. Go down the back. Just take that out. I'll put that there so it kept them together. And I'm going to weave it at the back. around the back that's it make sure I've not caught anything then down back of one of the legs like you've done before with the arms just weave down the back so you're not going to the front and weave three times one Two. And it just stops it coming out as easy. Again, fabric glue, if you want to buy a bottle. They're only in small bottles. And I always have it in. I don't always use it. But it is absolutely, I love it for doing things like this. Oops. <laughs> so there's his funny legs. <laughs> Loved it wobbly. That's what the arms would be like on mine if I didn't put pipe cleaners in. So I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in. It's a tiny little hole. Tiny. And then you just weave it in. And push it up and down. I'll show you. I'll just finish off and I'll show you what I mean. So I've finished every round. And to finish off, I will slip stitch into the next stitch or oh, it's fiddly because it's very tight slip just stitch slip stitch into the next stitch pull it a little bit tight and then yarn over cut yourself a good length of tail and then pull through that and that will secure it but you don't cut off there Thread your needle, no, have I put enough in? I have up top, I know I have, yep, yeah. and you want to close the bottom, so just weave in this few stitches that's left, just to close at the bottom. And then I'll do what I'm going to do at the back of Kevin. So I've closed that at the bottom. Go through to the back of the teddy, which this is. Oh, it's still got a clip in. Go to the back and just push, push down the teddy. Don't lose your needle though. And then what you do is bring it out. Try not to go and um, go through a stitch, go through a, a, a natural hole. Pull. Now if you pull too tight, which I have, just pull it. Just pull the corn back into shape so it's pointy at the bottom. Then at the back, you see the way the stitches are lying. Follow one of those, go back down. Go a bit of a ways, probably length of your needle. And you do this on, on body parts of the same colour. Pull it through. Not too tight. Not too tight. Again, just ruffle him around. You see, you can't see where I've been. And then do the same. 
This is why I say give yourself a good length of tail, follow the stitch direction, go somewhere different. But I always do it on the back. Go through a natural hole and pull it back up. I like to overkill weaving in because I've come unstuck before now. And then go back down. And then you can cut off. But before you do, just give it a little, give it a little roll around. Just got his green tops. <laughs> That's so funny. There you go. I'll insert some pictures so you can see the full length when I've done. And I'll put the carrot tops on. Mm -hmm.